This is the story of a crisis in the Dominican history of Drogheda. We have been here for 790 years and uh, we presume we would be here for another 790 years if the universe lasts that long. And it came as an enormous shock to us when the prior came back from a meeting in Tala and said we were being closed. We felt doomed and we are doomed. Or are we? That's what this story is about. That Thursday evening we were in the kitchen having our tea and Father Tony came in and he just said they've decided to close us. They're closing St Magdalene's. How could they close a lovely church like we had? Before I knew it, Sunday, Sunday evening, I was sitting in the church and I was fasting. I didn't know how long this was going to go on, but I didn't think it would go on as long as it did. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Wednesday I still had no word from the council. Thursday, Friday, I said to myself, there no way are they going to let me go over the weekend without eating. Sunday evening came and not one word from them. Monday, Tuesday, nine days, nine days of fasting before they got in contact with me. It was a Tuesday evening. They came in about nine. They asked if they could have a chat. I said, of course. And we went up to the library. Myself, Father Jim, Rita, and two members of the Provincial Council. They asked me, let's sort this out. They said, everything was up for grabs. We mightn't be able to save the house. They were still leaving, but we could save St Magdalene's, the church. I told them I understand if they had to go, that was fine. But the church would have to stay open. They told me that it was doable, that the priest that would that come to Siena to say Mass in the mornings could come down and say Mass here in St Magdalene's. And we could walk out the weekend Masses. I was happy, Father Jim was happy, Rita was happy. St Magdalene's was going to be saved. And when we left the room that night, uh, Declan, Rita and myself, well I can only speak for myself, I was absolutely sure that they had said the church is safe. Now whatever words they try and use afterwards and oh you misunderstood or you didn't, well that is what I understood, the church was safe and I think Rita and uh, Declan did as well. And Declan came off his fast and celebrated with a cup of tea and a piece of loaf bread. Um, we were quite sure. I was thinking of all the people in the church the next day. I would be able to tell them that we were able to save St Magdalene's. They would still be able to continue coming to Mass. I felt good. Declan and I made an appointment with the Provincial and we went up to Tala and said I presume everything is as on Tuesday night when you shook hands on this and the Provincial said well no not quite and then they said that they weren't guaranteeing that the church would stay open. Again it was a terrible shock to us. It was indeed. I looked at the provincial and I said to myself, you shook my hand Tuesday evening. You gave me your word. A man's word is his bond. I just looked at the two of them in the room and I said to myself, 
When did priests stop being priests? When did they become politicians? They didn't care one bit about the people in Drada. They did not care about me or Father Jim sitting there in front of them. We were like a piece of dirt under our shoe. They didn't want us there. I'm so sick of them. They tried to, he had a henchman with him and uh, they tried to bamboozle us with a lot of legal talk about the constitutions and it didn't mean anything to us. And after about half an hour, yes, half an hour, we realized we were getting nowhere and we said, we leave, and we left. How did you feel, Father? I felt, oh, I felt so, I felt dishonored. I felt really dishonoured and that people could be so mendacious, I suppose. Yes, yes. I felt awful, terrible. No, I, I felt that Declan had been let down, I felt myself let down, and Rita and all those who had worked so hard, so hard to, to have this assurance that the church in Trahada St Magdalene's would stay open. I just felt that that couldn't be, but it is. When, when Frank um, suggested the rally, it was to save the church. But we were so excited, the church was saved, and we thought, oh, people are going to be so happy and so shocked. We're going to uh, turn it into a celebration and a party afterwards that we we were going to surprise everyone on the day by telling them the church was actually safe. Keep our church open. Keep our church open. Keep our church open. Keep our church open. on the understanding there was a process going to be made and a deal had been shook on by two members of the provincial council. That deal was that St. Magdalene's church was safe, not the priory, the church was safe and would be looked after by a visiting priest from another house. We found out kind of late last night and this morning that is not on the table. They have gone back on their word. We are supposed to listen and be guided by these people. Now they are saying we have to go into discussions. What was agreed the other night was that the Magdalene would be safe. It is heartbreaking to think Devlin shook hands with these men whose word he valued and had faith in and came off the fast under false pretenses, being told one thing and saying, no, 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 that's not what we agreed on. We agreed this, we agreed to talk about this. We agreed to talk about that. There were five people in that room that night. We know what was said. And I'm sorry, if they are not willing to say it in front of cameras or a journalist or anyone, we do not want to talk to them. And I would just let them know, we have been in contact with various people who joined Declan on his fast last weekend, and they are willing to take up the fast. The fast will be taken up again by a number of people in the coming days. This is Father Harris, one of the people from the provincial council, and might I say, one of the guys who shook Declan's hand under false pretenses. Now, last week, last time I came down, and I make the same appeal to all of you as 
I live to dedicate and raise my father and baby last Sunday. We want to work together. That's what we want to do. Right? We need to work together. The reality is, for us to win it, right? When I came to this house 20 years ago, there was eight of us in the community. I was the youngest. When I left three years later, there was four left in the community. Now there's two. There are, what do we say? In our Dominican community of Ireland, there are 51 of us under 65. We have 19 communities in the country. We cannot keep all the communities together. And our laws tell us there has to be six in each community. Right? So we have to try to work within the parameters of our law and constitution. I'm here at the moment. My name is Father Jim Dunleavy. And I've had a triple bypass. And I'm here trying to recover. Not an easy atmosphere to recover. And I have not got a house of assignation. That means I'm one. And I put a proposition to the provincial, and I hope it will be taken. When I am back to normal, and my normality is embraced, when I'm back to normal, I would be very happy to be the one priest here that keeps the place going. Six. So what would it? So rationalisation. I know, but rationalisation in every world, right? Father, may I just ask just to clarify something? The church is closing. I'm right in front of you here, Father. Well, sorry. Uh, the church is closing, or the church is not closing. Exactly. I don't know. In your, in your opinion, Father. In your opinion. In my opinion, and I'm talking as John Harris, right? I hope that we can arrive at a solution, that, that this church can be kept open. What I want to ask is, is, why did it take so long for a representative to contact the church here when it was an absolute disarray? <laughs> just, 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 just before you answer, 
the way he was treated and the way he was ignored was absolutely pitiful and it shouldn't have happened. So that man was on hunger strike for nine after ten days of no food before anybody took the courage or the manners or whatever else it takes to come down and talk to him. And the I, I, mean, I mean, what's your reaction to that? And I thought today, last Sunday. Openly. Do you speak openly? No, I didn't speak to the crowd because I asked should I and I was told to because it's a mess. I did speak to people outside the door. Right? And I spoke to Tech last week. And I, I got sick, I didn't get Tech I didn't get All I said is, please, can we work together? This is the beginning of a process. But how come when Declan came off his hunger strike, and I apologise for interrupting you, how come when Declan came off, as he calls it, his fast, that he turned around and he was told, he was promised, that this church was not closing? So, so where, where, where's, where's the contradiction here? I, 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 the contradiction, I don't, I'm not saying the contradiction. Those four points I remember. Did you shake Declan's hand and, and tell him that the church was not closing? I said, let's discuss what's going to Did, No, uh, please answer my question. Did you actually I say to Declan... I told exactly what I told you. I don't know what's going to happen. So you did not shake his hand and tell him the church was not closing on I Tuesday? I did not tell him the church was not closing. I hope it doesn't. I did not you say... Know, I said there was no good print. And I was there the in the room, Mr. Father oh, John. I was there in the room and Declan on, said... You, you, we did agree there was no blueprint, and you asked Declan, yeah. were we all happy? And yes. Declan said, just for clarification, yeah. the church is safe, and we will have a visiting priest. And you go, absolutely, no, absolutely, you did, you did, you did. Did I you did. Did you did. Did this or didn't I? John, did you it? said a lot of things, Lots include things. you did. That's what I said. Yeah, I stupidly said yes. You That's told me I, I needed to get my glasses, I, I should have. have. I read this out to you. And yes, I you did. Nine yes, nine you did. Yes, nine. you did. But you also said this church was safe. Devin, yes or no? Yes. Sorry. Did I not say it? Let's talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. say let us have one priest in the Dominican here and we'll keep with the very strong backing of the laity we'll keep this church going and the 790 years will not will soon be 800 years I would like them to go back and get together and I would like Father Harris and Father Greg to tell the rest of the council the deal they had made here on that Tuesday night with Declan in front of myself 
and Father Jim and I would like them to stick to that promise, to their word they gave that night and to rethink what they have done, not only to Declan but to the people of Drogheda. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. You will not fool me again. <laughs>